Hey, I'm Duncan Campbell. Very fortunate I get to do the sport I love. Double caution, immediate left, three over crest. Member at Covenant Church in your mills, husband to Ruth, uh, dad to Blair, Ivan Grace, and Ruby our dog. Uh, I work at DC7 Vending and uh, my pastime and my hobby, I'm fortunate I get to rally. I did the co piloting for Duncan um, from 2007 to 2010, so four seasons. Just gave me up my phone call one day and asked if, if I would be interested in being his co pilot. So I'm thinking to myself, he probably doesn't know anyone daft enough to sit beside him and do this. So we were going out to, to road test the car uh, to get the feel for it. Um, so we, we were driving round behind your mills, uh, which a road we both knew uh, very well. Uh, we went down into this dip and came up out the other side and we became airborne. Yeah, Gary wasn't supposed to tell you about any crashes, so yeah, we've, we've crashed. Uh, thankfully it's never hurt, uh, apart from the pride, it always takes a hit. Um, I mean, it started the first night out, and when I bought the, the 205, uh, Gary and I went out the first night, and um, that's the biggest accident we ever had. We rolled it that night, and I learned very quickly that a rally car behaves very differently to a road car. And so the car landed too far over onto the near side and two wheels were on the grass so Duncan like a pro was trying to steer the car back onto the tarmac but uh, unfortunately it didn't happen so the car um, the car went out of control and I can remember seeing Hedge um, Tarmac Road and then Night Sky and then finally coming to rest on a large fir tree. Uh, but thankfully we were both okay. We managed to exit the car uh, with really only with our pride having taken a knock. That was a sore learning curve. Um, and out with that, put it in a ditch a few times. So, as they say, you maybe get older and wiser and realise you've got uh, bigger priorities in life that you have to make sure you're there for. Duncan, how was that? Okay, hi, yeah, I don't think I'm brave enough for that, and I don't think I'd have to lag on, but no, great stage, I've seen it slipper in there, being honest with you, I mean, you know yourself, that stage, it can drag into the ditch at times, but uh, no, it ran well, so uh, having fun. Good stuff, making the most of the long straights. Yeah, trying to let her stretch her legs a wee bit, so, need to get some bravery pills, I think. <laughs> Good stuff, right, thank you. So I became the chaplain at Darville Football Club, uh, January 2022 which uh, was quite a surprise to me, but it's something that I love. It was something that uh, was quite daunting, if I'm being honest. Um, I knew it was God's plan for me when, when we started, but certainly it wasn't something that was particularly easy. Uh, but certainly through, through the past year, I'm very fortunate. You know, we've got a tremendous group of guys there. Um, and from being made, you know, from being like the alien to begin with, I now, I now feel very much part of the team. And uh, it's a privilege to be on the journey that they're on as a team and as, and as a club. And hopefully just trying to bring a Christian witness there and be a support to the boys. We beat Aberdeen uh, in, in the Scottish Cup there, which was just incredible and brought a real, uh, a real buzz to the, both the town because they very much want the club to be part of the community as well as uh, the club itself and, and the boys. Yeah, it's been it's been a great experience. Sick tier yeah. Dolby, one of the <clears throat> biggest upsets in Scottish Cup history. They beat Aberdeen last night. Easily the biggest shock I can I can I can remember. It's a fantastic achievement. Rallying's uh, I couldn't tell you when you know, I literally fell in love with the sport, but I remember as, as a wee boy, uh, just loving rallying, loving the sport, and um, trying to get to see it on TV, because it's not a sport you, it's very easy to find in, in, on television. And uh, obviously at that point, Colin McRae was my hero, and uh, he just, 
you just you, when you watched him in a car, you literally were on the edge of the seat because he was just on the limit and always given a hundred percent. Ruth and I were down at Goodwood Festival of Speed. Um, I think it was something she gave me for my Christmas one year. We were down, and it's, it's a great event for those who are into motorsport and cars. And uh, there was a rally stage there, and Colin McRae was on that, developing his, his new car at that point. And I remember Ruth saying, "Look, you should go and meet him." And I was like, oh no, I don't want to be, you know, the saddle sort of thing. And uh, I, thought, I thought, you know, there'll, there'll be other times. And it wasn't long after that that unfortunately uh, Colin was died, the accident happened. So uh, after that, um, myself and Gary, we did the McRae stages at Portlochry, where rally drivers from all over the world came in um, to commemorate Colin. Uh, that was a special event. And what he did for the sport, certainly for my generation, and even for, you know, for car brands, what, what, what other sportsmen has, uh, I think, changed a, sport, a car brand so much in that before McRae, it was vets and farmers that drove Subarus. And then we all want, you know, so many of us boy racers wanted to drive Subarus. So, uh, yeah, I loved the sport. I never thought I'd be able to have a rally car. But, um, yeah, I've enjoyed the, the time I've been having. Ooh. Duncan Campbell. Duncan Campbell and Michael Crookshank. Mochlin, man. Beautiful. Yes. That was lovely. It did. That would be uh, the, the traditional Scandinavian flick there. And that's no easy said with my teeth. <laughs> 50. Right, 7 over crest, 100. So, um, to get your... your your uh, race licence had to go to a course at Knock Hill, uh, up in Fife, and I've got a National Stage B licence, which allows me to do forest and tarmac stage events. Um, I can't go international on it, but certainly the, that gets renewed every year. Medically, it's all checked and all that sort of stuff as well. So, you know, s the safety is of primary importance from the car point of view and from, from the individual. Co-driver's key, absolutely fundamental. Um, the, the, you know, the, the focus can be at times on the rally driver, but actually there's, there's nothing there without a good co-driver, and it's a team. Um, they have, obviously, the administration stuff to do. There's a lot of paperwork to get done. Uh, and then also they, get, they have the pace notes. So they're calling to us, um, telling what that next corner, a possible one in front of that, is going to be. So they say the most successful rally drivers basically drive blind. They're driving on their notes. So they're 100% committed and trusting that what the co-driver's telling them is accurate. So the corner they're currently in, will already be, they'll already have the car set up for that. And they are believing that, you know, over that crest, there is going to be that corner that you can't see. Uh, and that's whether you're accelerating because it's actually going to be okay when the brain's saying, you know, you can't see this. Um, and it's having that trust, having that faith, and, and usually the, the guy beside you that, you know, we're on it. And also him trusting the driver that um, that we're going to do what they tell us to do. Uh, so that's why in the intercom, the co-driver's voice is always louder. <laughs> it's always something that gets heard the most. You've got to just keep down. You're, you're giving Duncan instructions all the time. So... I tended to find myself wanting to look up to see what's going on. Is, is he handling this okay? Is the is he, is he, is the car going in the right direction? So that that takes time just to just trust that, and you're feeling the car going in all sorts of directions, and it's quite loud with the noise of the engine and the bottom of the car getting hot with stones. Just, just keep reading that out and then you're glancing up very quickly just to make sure that you're reading it out at the right time. I know for a, like Gary, for a fact, is a better driver than me. I know that. Uh, there's other co-drivers who want to be co-drivers. They've maybe tried the driving and it, it, they can't somebody maybe handle that pressure. Uh, I couldn't be a co-driver. As, you know, as drivers call it the silly seat, I, I just... No, I don't think I could do that. Um, so that often you get that mixture of people who want to be co-drivers, want to be part of, even just the sheer buzz during a rally, 
when you know it, it's non-stop. Whereas with um, circuit racing, you might have you know 25 laps of constant, and then you're finished. With us, you know, we'll start at as I say 9:23 tomorrow, and we'd expect to finish probably about half past four. But you're you know you're on the road, and then you're in the stage, and when you're in that stage, you're a hundred percent hopefully flat out. But then you've got to come out that stage, come back down. We're all we're tying for different things, road sections as well. So we have to, if we arrive early, if, if, if we've been speeding on the road, we're penalised, um, check in for service, and then the guys obviously are straight on the car. So it's a constant buzz, is the honest truth, all day. Uh, but that's motorsport. You're either in the extreme highs or the extreme lows when it goes wrong. A few boys who service for us, um, and you know, we, I couldn't do it without them. Simple as that, I am not mechanically minded. Uh, I'm fortunate I get to, try to hold the steering wheel, but the, the boys that put the work in round about it to make it happen, we used to have, they've kind of stopped this system, we used to have chase cars as well, which would be sitting at the end of a stage, so that if we've punctured, if we've done something, they could quickly get things sorted. So it's very much a team event, um, and keeping the car going through the event to get us to the end. The level we're at in the Scottish Championship, there's a company, Scott Maps, or other companies who will go through the stages and write the notes. And these are experienced guys who know what they're doing. They know what to look for. Um, so there's different formats of notes. So you can have standard one to nine, uh, reverse one to nine, and all these numerous different formats. I work with the reverse uh, one to seven, which basically is more tied in with my gearbox. So that when I'm getting told, uh, you know, tight left two, then I'll know I should be, if it's a tight left two into a tight right one or something like that, then I'll probably be in second because I'm then going tighter again. Whereas if it's a tight right two opens into long left four, then I'll probably be pushing her into third to try and let her start to drift, getting ready for the next corner. Um, anything above five, uh, then I should be in, in the bigger gears committing. Um, so it's trying to tighten with the gearbox as well um, to help get the car set up properly. Um, is how the notes generally work. And obviously, we're getting fed um, the information, logging outside, ditch outside, um, don't cut. Now, as a driver, you're always wanting to cut. You're always wanting to get in tight to that corner. And, it, you know, we're, well, the world's worse that we hear don't cut, but we still think we can cut a wee bit. And then you hear the thump, <laughs> and it's like, oh. Uh, but, yeah, uh, it's, it's listening to what we're told and believing that it's true. Oh, oh, that's big cuts. That's big cuts. What's wrong with the middle of the road? <laughs> There's no fear anyway. There's no. The abuse that the car takes is horrendous, is the honest truth, but um, it's built for that. So, obviously, it's a, it was a road car shell, um, but a lighting shell, and then it's, it's made as light as possible. The suspension and all that has changed that, you know, then uh, the car's stripped and the roll cage goes in it, which um, again is of primary importance, full roll cage in uh, to protect us. Um, suspension's always changed to absorb the level of the rocks and the, the roughness that we can be, uh, be taking as we talk, you know, the ditch cutting, when you're trying to drop a, a front wheel in the ditch to help pull you around, the car takes so much abuse with that. So suspensions all change, brakes, we are quite standard brakes uh, and the gearbox we're running is pretty much standard as well. A lot of the boys are running sequential or the dog boxes. So we've got a Subaru engine here and uh, you see it's got steel rods in it and different things done to it as well. Remapped uh, for, for the woods to give us uh, basically more torque because um, the torque is key in the, in the forest. Here you've got your Proflex which is your suspension, the gold canisters there. Um, we can adjust that depending on um, what sort of stages we're in or if we're on tarmac as well so we can firm it we're clicking these things here or we can make it softer generally in the woods we're on soft to try and absorb more of, more of the bumps uh, and, and the, the stuff that's going on underneath the car it has to have an MOT because obviously in between stages we're on the public road so it has to do everything that a road car should do it's very very rough on the road with the diffs um, but once you're in, once you're in a rally stage, that's when she just becomes a, 
a different thing altogether. You'll see you've got your Kevlar under body protection and also underneath at the front there you'll have a sump guard which is just basically just solid steel to protect the, the sump of the engine and then the car's Kevlar guarded uh, all the way underneath um, exhaust raised a bit as well uh, and just to try and protect the car fuel tank it's a, a bag tank that's in the car um, the fuel is fit you see we, we, we close that off and the fuel gets fed in there our system it, it's a race fuel, fuel that we use uh, you can see it just feeds in there with a bag tank from a safety point of view as well you know, all, all your fuel lines are brought inside so that they can't get pierced or anything like that. So tyres, obviously it's a far, a far stronger tyre uh, than, than a standard road tyre. So, so the sides walls are all properly reinforced and uh, these are Pirelli KM6s. So the KM6 is uh, generally for a, a certain type of muddy environment uh, with, with the gravel. She, she can chew tyres when, when we're on it. So we've, we've got our master switch in here, which we put on. You'll see there's the ignition's taken out the car, so that if, if, if we're driving through a stage, that's when the key could jump and switch the car off, so that's all taken out the car. Your ignition turn on there. You'll hear the fuel pump kick in. We've got our settings there, so what you'll see is the active diffs. If you see the wee green light down the bottom, that's all the diffs off and then we'll get different settings depending on the conditions we're in. And generally in the woods, I, I would run with the diffs locked. We never used to, but I do now. What you'll also see there is the uh, ALS, which is anti-lag system. So basically, when I'm on the start line of a stage, you'll be getting your countdown from 10 seconds, and then on five, you'll turn the anti-lag on, and it distorts the engine, it distorts the turbo. Uh, so that you don't get the turbo lag the same and it just keeps the car on the power and it just uh, makes the car come alive. Spare wheel sits in the middle of the car as well, again for weight distribution. And then you've got your rear canisters for the suspension. We also have an environmental spill kit in the boot so that if we do the car brakes and it's losing oil, we put that underneath the car so that we're not doing any damage. What you'll also see down in there is a fire extinguisher kit. So um, basically, if anything happens and the car goes into fire, then we hit them at the, the main fire switch. This here is a pipe for fuel sampling. So at any time during a rally, we could be stopped and they test the fuel to make sure we're not running uh, an illegal fuel. You've got your headsets there for on the road. Uh, Six is obviously it's very, very noisy in the car. Um, and obviously we have our helmets all plugged in as well. Your seat is, uh, is, is like a race seat basically to, to hold you tighter in with a five point harness um, so that we're held in really, really tight. So whereas with your car um, seat belt, you have a bit of give in it, with a rally race seat, you're held as tight as possible so that the, you're held in because you're getting thrown about so much. And obviously the seat is all bolted into place, there's no natural adjustment, it, it, it gets set up for you. Our handbrake there is hydraulic, we see that big lever there, so the standard handbrake and all that is taken out the car, and it's a hydraulic handbrake, which is basically like a switch to an extent, you know, once, once you're um, maybe corrupt a hairpin or anything like that, or a tighter corner, you're just pulling on the handbrake and it'll get the back end out. And the co-driver's side, so he's got his, his trip meter here, so this records in the stage and the miles we're doing, um, just a lot of different, uh, it's actually done by GPS, different things that the, what the car's doing and monitors that and um, different uh, radio points within the stage, it'll, it'll monitor that. Uh, and when, when we've got our road sections as well, um, Basically, that, that'll get calculated by that as well when he presses, presses different buttons and it records different speeds and different distances and all this sort of thing. So that's co-driver's job in there. Uh, you'll also see a handheld unit, fire extinguisher down there as well. And you'll notice that he's, 
he sat as far back as, as we can get him uh, to the roll cage and as low as possible to keep the weight down and keep the weight in, in the middle of the car. So the dashboard is all flopped and that's for sun reflection so that we don't get the, the dazzled by the sun. We usually have a very big sun visor as well. We'll be getting more stickers when we arrive at the snowman tonight. This part you can see sticking up there on, on the dashboard. What goes on there is a tracker. And basically during the stages, uh, it's all for safety. They're monitoring the cars. And if for any reason they notice something stops, then they know something's happened. And in the same breath, if we come upon somebody who's broken down or uh, had an accident, we just press the button and it will radio to them. I didn't have a Damascus experience or anything like that. I was brought up, very fortunately, in a Christian family. And my parents, you know, always took me to church, Loudon Church in New Mills. I don't remember a time that I didn't love God. And... Uh, I remember the Billy Graham mission. Sorry, mate. I remember the, the Billy Graham mission. It uh, was happening up in Glasgow. And there's a wee, I think it'd be 12, 13. The church was taking, you know, a few busloads up. And I think it was at Parkhead. And I remember standing in the terracing. And, you know, Billy Graham put out his call. Get up out of your seat and come and stand here right now, quickly. Hundreds of you. We're going to wait on you. You that are back here, you may be in the choir, you may be an usher, a uh, steward. You get up and make your way. As people are already starting to come here, scores of people. Uh, I wanted to go, but I wanted my friend to go with me, and he said he wasn't ready. And Billy Graham put out the, the other call, and I was still standing there, but I wanted to go publicly and profess my faith. Uh, and then he put out the last call, and uh, it was, I felt go, and I did. And uh, for me, that was like, a time in my life of a sort of fundamental time, but that was me making that step and that public profession of being a Christian. And funnily enough, my, Ruth uh, was at the same event, at one of the events, and I actually went on to the, the uh, football pitch as well to do the same thing. We never met, never knew, but uh, once we started going out a number of years later, uh, we found that out, so we believe God had a plan at that stage as well. Uh, Favourite verse, I think it would be Jeremiah 2911, um, for I know the plans I have for you. Probably favourite Bible character would be Noah. Um, I just think the story of Noah is amazing, you know, what a, what a faith he had for what God asked him to do. And favourite book in the Bible would be Proverbs. I love Proverbs. Just so much in it. And it's so to the point, you know. You know, we're all at rally drivers to an extent. We all, your rally car is your life, you know. You, you steer it. You, um, God makes us deciding beings. And we can choose to, to go his way or not. And we can choose, you know, to invite that co-driver cool alongside us. That co-driver cool being Jesus. And... Having him in our lives, we can choose to listen or we can choose not to. And like in rallying, that's hard. You know, it, it's a discipline. Um, but it's knowing that that person knows best. And that person wants the best for us. You know, he, he died to save us. So it's trusting that, like those pace notes, he gives us the Bible. And we have to listen to when he speaks to us through that. And by doing that, then, yeah, there's things in front that we don't know, but somebody's been before us, and it's trusting, it's having that faith, that walk of faith, it's like what I spoke of earlier on, the, the best rally drivers drive by the notes that they're told, and so as as Christians, if, if, if we live by faith, that the things we cannot see, we don't know what lies over the crest, but somebody else does, and um, it's having that faith to to walk in that way and to keep going on uh, it's, it's where I see it. You know, we, we, we think we know best as rally drivers and we think we know best in life's at time. And it's, uh, it's knowing that somebody else does and who wants the best for us. Um, so that just like 
you know, we run the race, we're told that in the Bible, you know, to run the race, the endurance of keeping going, that, yeah, it's not always easy, and it can be really hard, we have the highs and the lows, but it's keeping going, it's reading God's word, it's, it's being part of church, it's serving, it's um, putting him first in what we're doing, and, you know, ultimately, as I say, the devil will try and distract us, we'll sin, we'll fail, and I, he'll want us to feel that we're failing. And we do feel. You'll, you'll hear, you know, 400, i.e. 400 yards and three or four crests. So I can't, you can't see what lies in front. And he'll, he'll, you know, give that hand of keep going on. Trust me. There's huge trust in it. And look, we all make mistakes. Co-driver makes mistakes. And driver makes mistakes. And it's a... Uh, it's, it's having that trust and that companionship and friendship to, to keep going on. The Lord will be there for you. Um, put your trust in Him and um, ask for a renewed, renewed mind daily and He will, he will be with you and enable you to, to pull through in whatever situation you're in. Life has, has much to offer. There's many great things in life. There's no denying that, but nothing compares to knowing Jesus. And having, <clears throat> having that walk of faith and walking close with God he, and Jesus, they're always there. And it's always us that, that drifts away. And the closer we walk with God, the more he wants to bless us. And it won't be often in, in the ways that we think. Thankfully, he doesn't do what we think should happen. He knows best. But it's, it's having that faith, which is hard. You know, a, a Christian walk's a hard thing. Um, those that tell you it's easy, they're not telling you the truth. It can be hard. Um, but it's keeping going. And uh, it, it's, it's when you look back in your life, isn't it? And it's when you see there's a hand of God. And... It's, it's trusting that that hand never leaves us, is always with us. And it's only that we see that's his plan for us. Um, even though it's probably not our plan, but it's knowing that it's his plan. And it's, it's being, I mean, God, I believe God wants us to be bold and wants us to uh, knock doors um, and, and see what his plans are for us. And being bold in our lives, being bold in our faith, uh, to share our faith um, with others as well, uh, which again can be hard. I know that, you know, with the chaplaincy, um, you're straight away known as, as the Christian within that. But I think sometimes in, as Christians, we, we try and hide our faith, uh, or maybe that's just myself, but actually people are searching um, because yeah, whether it's winning a rally, whether it's winning a football match, whether it's huge success in, in, in family life and uh, business and careers and all these things, as I say, nothing though compares to, to knowing Jesus.